Sports' perspective and the show starts right now. Teachers have downed their tools and they are officially on strike. This latest crippling industrial action affects public schools, but could this be a symptom of a deeper financial strain that the Uhuru Kenyatta-led government finds itself in? This is the focus of our first segment of the show, Headline versus Bottom Line. Let's get into it. Here's our headline for this week. Learning has been paralyzed in public schools countrywide as government-employed teachers kick off a strike that has seen pupils and students alive leave their bags at home. The KNUT officials have dismissed the calls by the president for dialogue in order to end the stalemate. The teachers want the government to honor a 1997 agreement under legal notice 534 in which they are calling for hardship, house and commuter allowances. But here's the bottom line. Now it's widely known that teachers are indeed underpaid and the 47 billion shilling deal that would get them back into the classroom is one that deserves a look at. However, whether the government can afford to pay them at present is a question. And the answer to that is yes. This will no doubt have an impact on whatever resources they choose to draw from. But the fact is that waiting for 16 years to give people their due is 16 years too long of a wait. That's headline versus bottom line for this week. Now you can tell us which headline you want us to focus on for next week's show. You can tweet us on at KTN Perspective. An African woman is one who, among many other things, can bear children. Or at least that is what is in the subtext of many cultures across this continent. Yet according to a 2006 survey by an international NGO, over 700,000 Kenyan women cannot have children. Infertility in women is such a sensitive subject that even these statistics may underestimate just how many women are unable to bear children. Tonight, KTN's Edith Kimani makes her debut one perspective with a feature that goes right to the heart of the stigma, the science and the solutions to what many women feel is a shame of a cold womb. He had two wives, the name of one, Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Her rival, Penina, used to provoke her severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. Even before Christ, the subject of fertility and the lack of it was a sensitive issue. Thousands of years later, infertility is a problem in Kenya and there's so many people that have children. Well, I'm killing total. Women are shy to talk about it because it makes a woman feel inferior, like less of a woman. Infertility remains a hot button issue, well hidden in cold wombs. When the light turns green, Nairobi is on the go. Nowhere is this more evident than the Korogosha slum sitting on the eastern edge of the capital. Here, no one seems to stop, not even to spare a curious glance at a visiting news crew. And so the people here keep moving. Men, women and especially Veronica Wanjiro. It has taken several attempts and phone calls to get Veronica to talk to us. Women like her don't like talking about their problem, least of all on national television. When we get to her, there is more convincing yet. Finally, we reach an agreement. As we set up for the interview, she tells me she would like to have her identity hidden. One more negotiation and she agrees to tell me everything in the full glare of the cameras. Her story takes us to 1990 when she got into an informal marriage with her boyfriend. From 1990, 
wazazi wake wako na siwezi pata mtoto because tumekaa tu tumekaa tu wana wana, wana demand for kwa kwa kupata mjukuu so pressure ipozidi ibidi kijana niambie nijipe shughuli nitajishughulisha Veronica says she doesn't remember what the doctors say caused the infertility something about blocked tubes is all she mentions casually the events of that day are a bit of a blur to her but what followed is clear as day the first blow was having her long time boyfriend leave her for another woman sipendangi kukumbuka kwa sababu ilikuwa kwa yani eh ni kama umetoka kwenye mafuta ambayo yanachemka unaingia ndani ya makaa Roji it's very painful yone. kama sasa tuseme for example sister yangu ambaye ndio mdogo wangu yako na watoto so unaona mimi nilikuwa nikifeel ni mimi ndio nimekosea Mungu ni yani nilikuwa na lia yangu yote nikiuza Mungu nimekosa nini then the desperation kicked in from prayers to a short stint at counseling Veronica tried everything to get her mind off her infertility kuna mmoja niletea miti ni dawa by the way ilikuwa kwa ni 10 liters nilipambana na ile maji mpaka <laughs> niko na mshu wa dunia aki nilikunywa nikaikunywa nikaikunywa ikaisha nikamuza eh na sikukumeniambia hata 5 liters si itaisha sasa hii ni 10 liters nimemaliza sitaki nyingine ati hapana nikamwambia je uniniambia na kunywa asubuhi saa sita na jioni and by the way nilikuwa na make sure asubuhi nikiamka nimekuja nikitaka kutoka na niko na chupa nimeweka kwa chupa na yeye having lived in this slum for more than 20 years almost all her neighbors know she cannot have children some have been kind to her and others still poke fun at her at every turn the constant ridicule has done little to repress her desire for a child nasema ngata kama ningepata tu nipate tu mimba alafu itoke imagine naweza furahi sana hata sieni sitaki ati nipate mimba alafu niza nipate tu nisikie iko ndani alafu itoke na nisipate mwingine ningeza kufurahi sana Veronica says the chances of her getting a child shrink by the day perhaps if she had money she might pursue other ways to get a child kuna hiyo kuna wakati nilikuwa nimejaribu kwenda kuadapt mtoto lakini sasa ile processing the adoption process begins with the assessment of prospective adoptive parents to be assessed veronica had to find an approved adoption agency this is where she bumped into her first challenge there are only four approved adoption societies in kenya she did not know even one When she eventually located them, Veronica realized all of the agencies were way too far from her Korogosho home. Finding bus fare to and from these locations was a second hurdle. Then there were the prospective bills. Adoption agencies ask for anywhere between 12 and 14,000 shillings to cover their administrative costs. Then there is a 60 to 100,000 shillings fee needed to pay the lawyers who handle all the legal paperwork. Even if she could come up with the funds, the agency together with the Department for Children would need to conduct a home assessment to determine her economic status and how safe the space would be for the child. The process was simply too overwhelming for a woman who sells scrap metal for a living. Infertile women living in this kind of poverty find the same financial restrictions when they pursue any form of aided fertility. Rosemary Olale works with these women on a daily basis. She runs a self-help organization for women in the slum and it is in this office that infertile women tell of their desperations. When they come here they do open up. Some do just come and tell me Rosemary, when I found out that I can't give my husband a kid, I tried playing sex even with my neighbor so that I can give kids. Some even when they walk from one husband to another, they will not use protection because what she's looking is a kid. Will you protect yourself when you want a kid? So they'll just do the naked sex. Yeah, looking for that kid. In the process she might get that pregnancy or she might not get it, but she might get the STIs. Rosemary says the women she has spoken to would rather get infected with HIV than have their husbands leave them for barrenness. I, 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 no.
Baba yangu wewe Usiwe na shaka Mimi niko oh Kita kuchotokea Nita kusa This is a level of hopelessness Nurse Jacqueline is used to If there is anything which is missing I know that the baby is missing Something or a certain organ then I know what to do. Maybe to refer the mother for the checkup. Having worked at this clinic for over three years, she has heard as many tales as there are barren women. In her observation, the driver of such extreme thoughts are the men. Of course, men are in, infertile, but in Korobuch, I've not seen men, but men are also infertile. They don't come out, they don't come to see. You know, in African setup, men don't want you to agree that they are infertile. They normally blame female, only when women, mm -hmm. that it's not me, it's a, a woman who I married. So in most cases, men are infertile, but they don't want you to accept it. They blame somebody else. Fertility in general appears to be a high pressure issue in Korogosho. No one at the hospital will allow us to film them, let alone give us their opinion on this topic. So we look elsewhere. insights into the lives of women who can't bear children but up next we look at the science driving some solutions to infertility and the law's definition of who a mother really is stay with perspective relax the secret is out discover the secret in Kenya's number one whiskey top secret distilled blended and bottled by London Distillers Kenya Limited. To get this song and the best top chart music, Bunyaza Star 699 Star 8 Hash. Just Bunyaza Star 699 Star 8 Hash now. Ford Ranger T6 lets you tow trailers weighing up to an impressive 3,350 kgs. Toma mitstari ya mapenzi kwa mbili moja 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 sufuri katika luha yoyote hata luha ya kwa ya mama ili upate fursa ya kujishindia pesa. Tuna jumla ya shilingi elfu nane kushinda niwa. Ungana na ae Esther Ingolo na mshamba kila siku ya wiki katika maisha jioni na ushinde na mbili moja 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 sufuri. Kumbuka, mistari bomba zaidi itaonyesho kwenye runinga ya KTN kila siku. Ujumbe huu umeleto kwako kwa isani ya Shades Advertising. A silhouetted figure sits in front of me. The light behind my interviewee is blinding, but the setup must remain as is. This 20-something-year-old cannot risk anyone knowing her identity. What she is about to tell us has been her secret since she was 19. The money was definitely a big motivator. It was, you know, tens of thousands of shillings for two weeks of pretty much just showing up and being injected. But then when I started thinking about it, I was like, what, I've been blessed with, you know, eggs. There are people out there, the women out there, who struggle every day, you know, trying to adopt, trying to get pregnant, trying to, you know, just fulfill that womanly role, you know, that society has placed on them. And I, I have it and I'm, I'm healthy and I'm not using my eggs. Egg donation, like sperm donation, is done for the sole purpose of in vitro fertilization. Healthy, fertile women are injected with hormones for a period to stimulate their ovaries. Upon maturity, the eggs are then harvested from the donor. Barren women seeking to have children then buy the donated eggs.
The eggs are later fertilized externally with their partner's sperm before being implanted into their wombs where a woman, unable to conceive naturally, can then be able to carry a pregnancy to full term. Stopped trying to get pregnant, trying to... In vitro fertilization is a major treatment for infertility where other methods of assisted reproduction have failed. But like all surgical procedures, it does have its risks. These risks are especially pronounced when there are no government policies to regulate the process. This donor experienced the risk firsthand. Um, I started getting a stomach ache and it, it felt like like a regular stomach ache until the pain became unbearable and I couldn't walk I, I, I it was just blindingly painful so I went to the hospital and the doctor asked me where I was feeling pain and I told him it was my lower abdomen and he did uh, like a hand exam put his hand to my to my lower stomach and he pressed it he pressed on it and I I died. I, it was so painful. I, I think I passed out. You know. So he did a, an ultrasound and he found there was a, there were cysts on my ovary, on one of my ovaries. Even though she got ovarian cysts, our interviewee was in a sense quite lucky. I've spoken to two other young women who have told me that they had to undergo surgery after their egg donation procedure went bad. Told you're not fit to be this. Ruth Kiruya is a lawyer who has studied the subject of assisted reproduction in Kenya extensively. Her findings show that there is nothing in the law protecting barren women or donors going through processes of assisted reproduction. Right now in Kenya we have a few IVF clinics or what we call assisted reproduction clinics that are running without a particular framework and we need a framework that would guide them. What this means is the procedure of IVF is unregulated. Doctors are left to run the show, setting prices, providing only the information they believe is vital, and screening for diseases they think are dangerous. When the lady sat me down the first time, the first thing she started with was how much I was going to make. So past that point, you know, for a 19-year-old girl, you're not really seeing, you know, you're not, you're not listening to the repercussions. You're not really taking into consideration how the hormones that you're getting every day are going to imbalance the already, you know, balanced chemical, uh, chemicals in your, you know, in, in, in your body. And I think this is an area we have to look into. There are a lot of controversies. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, this is happening. And how are we going to help the situation if the same is happening? So what I'll just say is that we need that legal framework like yesterday. Kwa leo, nikikaa hivi, nisema nilizalia mtoto, nilizalia mvisi mtoto. Mtoto anaweza kasikia ni jambo kawaida ikifika kwa masikio. Lakini pita kwa tendo. Nishida sana, nivigumu. In 2010, we aired the story of Joyce Lay and her friend who was gracious enough to carry a baby for her. Joyce could not medically carry a baby to term and needed a womb for her egg and husband's sperm to develop. While the baby biologically belongs to Joyce and her husband, two years later, Joyce is still in the process of finalizing an adoption for her two-year-old son. I don't have a definition of a mother in Kenya. But there is a definition of who a parent is. And the parent is the mother or father of a child according to the Children's Act. Uh, but further to that, you'll find that uh, we don't really know what confers motherhood. Is it the act of giving birth or is it the genetic link? The lack of a law, according to Ruth, inadvertently punishes the barren woman, many of whom are already enduring cultural stigma. Yes, it's not good. It's uh, something... Yeah. Us, to me I love it like uh, we should be respecting godly it's like it's like it's destroying the moral culture najua inakuwa dini na pinga lakini sasa kama mtu upati mtoto jo sometimes inabidi nategemea juu kwa sababu wanaume vile walivyo pressure mtu anataka mtoto unaona inabidi ina, ina kwa mtu ambaye hana kizazi kwa sharia ni haramu hiyo but bibi ambaye sina 
ondo yango kwa halali kuweka maya yangu kusaa hii watoto ni kama watoto zinatu a chat with members of Nairobi about the issue of surrogacy reveals that it might be one of those gray areas. People are not too keen to talk about it and when they do, they're not too clear where they stand. What does come out, however, is that religion is definitely a major factor on whether or not they would accept this procedure. <laughs> Reverend Kathy Kuna of the Jubilee Christian Church has emerged in recent years as one of the new age ministers of the Christian religion. With talk shows and magazine articles, the Reverend has redefined the traditional conservative role of a preacher. The, the attention. Yeah. Her views on aided fertility are just as new age. If the science can aid you and it's not interfering with anything to do with God, because like I said, you're not doing it in sin. What is seen is going to sleep around, you know, to, to try and, and, and get that child. But if you're going to do it uh, through the IVF and be assisted by somebody who can carry, then I don't see any, anything wrong with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as far as you know, biblically, it hasn't been said, no, you can't. No, 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 not biblically. It's not been said, no, you can't. And it's really more philosophical. You know what I'm saying? So, if we can agree, me and you, plus the person to, to provide. See, nowadays, you can actually buy the sperm from a bank <laughs> and an egg. If, if you want a Chinese baby, um, you, can, you can buy the sperm. You can buy it. And so, if you can rent a womb to carry that child. Personally, I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. Reverend Kuna is however careful to include a caveat you you use it as a last resort okay if really you've gone through all the tests and you've seen there's some women that go through tests and everything shows that they're all right then you wait in that case wait on the lord but there are those women who go and check and, and there's nothing there there's no womb no no tubes and like I said, there are some miracles that do happen where a woman with no tubes carries a baby. There are women who actually don't even have a uterus that carry a baby. So miracles do happen. Back in Korogosho, Veronica knows her infertility is a daily test of faith. The options for barren women are limited, not to mention very expensive. Government has done close to nothing for these women. Society has deposited the burden of childlessness on the woman and over the years Veronica has bought into their perceptions mwanamke ni mtoto kwa sababu hiyo ndio ina yani ina prove you are really a woman so unajua ukiwa kama huna mtoto ingawa hizo vitu zingine zote ni za mwanamke lakini sasa tofauti yako na mwanaume hakuna you are just there is that how you feel yeah ni pain lakini utadu mi ndiyo ni mwanamke ni na matiti zangu na kila kitu but ni mwakwambi wanasamanga mwanamke mzuri ni wila na wato kwa na hatu na uange na kenja the sun is about to set and the floodlights have been switched on in the slum everyone is still on the move but for our safety we have to leave We leave behind Veronica who believes that unless she gets a baby, she will die in the slum. A silent affirmation on her part that while the options for infertile women are limited and difficult, getting a child is not impossible. Edith Kimani for Perspective. On your perspective, we're asking how you would react if your spouse was infertile. Here's what some of you had to say. So, if you're in a relationship, there, there, there are some people who are not understanding. What happens is, there's some, uh, <clears throat> most people don't know that the marriage is not about children. 
that the marriage can still exist even without children. Um, there's always that important emotional attachment a mother has to the kid and also the father has to the kid, especially if it is now uh, your wife. Uh, of course, that is likely to be lacking when it's not your mother or you know, it's not your wife actually having the kid. But um, it's something I would consider as a last resort. That's where we wind up perspective this week. But send us your feedback on the show. You can tweet us on our show handle at KTN Perspective or tweet me on at John Alanamu. We're looking forward to putting your week in perspective next week. I'm John Alanamu. Keep it KTN. Good night.